Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, two guys, guys in a ride. ride. Today, Nate, tell us where we're at. Oh, we are at a boat show. The we're at the Progressive Boat Show at the Minneapolis Convention Center. That's right. So what are we taking a look at? We are taking a look at boats and personal watercraft. That's right. But say, before we do, take a moment, hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. So what do you say, Nate? Let's, Let's go look, look for, for a ride. ride. All right. Hey folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride and today I'm talking with Dave and we are sitting or standing in front of a, a very unique boat. It's a 1921 Vetner Step Hall Hydroplane. I got that all correct, correct I think. You got that all correct. All right, Absolutely. that's a mouthful. Absolutely. But so many unique things and, and Dave has got some particular knowledge about this. So Dave, tell us about correct. this boat. Right. This is, a, as you said, 1921 Ventner race boat, and the Ventner name came from Ventner, New Jersey, where the company was located. Uh, it was owned by a gentleman by the name of Adolph Apple, who was a, a, a real uh, trailblazer in hull design and was really the first guy to mess around with and figure out step hull boat design. And the, the idea behind the step is that the boat underway lifts up on top of the water mm -hmm. and when it works right and is in balance, you're riding just on a little bit of the hull here on each side of the boat right? and on the propeller, the rest of the boat is actually out, out of the water. Wow. And so they they developed that kind of very much by trial and error. Of course, there was no CAD and machining mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Yeah, this remember, folks, this was like 99 years ago. It was slide rules and pencils at the time, right? Um, so to make the boat go fast in the 1920s, the way that was accomplished was by putting an airplane engine in okay. the boat, and that made sense at that time because. There were a number of airplane engines available, government surplus left over from World War I, which ended for the U.S. in 1918. Now, they didn't know how long the war was going to last when the U.S. geared up for right. manufacturing. And for instance, the Liberty V-12 airplane engine uh, was produced in numbers around 20,000 of them, okay. and only 5,000 of them were used in the war, actually, so there was... So yeah, they had access to brand new right. airplane engines, that, you know, never and actually... And the, the Liberty engines were billed to the government at $15,000 a piece and could be bought for a couple thousand dollars surplus okay. later. This particular engine is a V8 Hispano Suiza, um, Hispano, Spain, uh, was the investment capital behind the company. Suiza, Switzerland, was the engineer. Okay. Uh, but they never were in Switzerland or Spain. They were in France. They, they <laughs> manufactured in France. And the Hispano Suiza company is uh, still in business uh, today in uh, the defense contractor oh, okay. mode, kind of at the scale of what okay. we know as General Dynamics today. Okay. So this is a V8 Hispano Suiza. It's a dual ignition engine. It, it incorporates a great deal of the technology that we think of as fairly recent in automobiles. So it's an overhead cam engine. It's a dual ignition. There are two spark plugs per cylinder. Um, multiple carburetors so all of those things were were in play and in production in the, the 19 teens 100 years ago so the boat um, 
was was it was a very special and expensive boat at the time, and it took a real character by the name of L. A. Lane was a business to own it. Well, he was a Texas wildcatter in the oil fields oh. in the 1920s. Okay, and he uh, had the boat built and shipped to Houston, and then he raced it in the Minnesota Valley Powerboat Association. Uh, whose races took place from Newport Beach, California to Kansas and, and Texas and Oklahoma and so I did see that there are there are four west. there yeah. are four winds posted right. on the exactly. right on the trailer exactly. from, between 1926 and 1928. Yes, so the boat, of course, as many did, uh, languished uh, for years and years and years and was restored a few years ago and then donated to the Antique Boat Museum in Clayton, New York, and okay. it is currently on loan to the Legacy of the Lakes Museum in Alexandria, Minnesota, and because I serve on the boards of both of those organizations, we were able to arrange a loan of the boat to here in Alexandria, and we said, gosh, if it's going to be here uh, since the Alexandria Museum is closed in the winter, let's get it to the Minneapolis Boat Show so that we can talk about the boat and talk about both museums in addition right. to the, our boat club, the Land O'Lakes Classic Boat Club. That, I mean, that's just so neat how that all works together to bring yes. it back so everyone can see it. Absolutely. You know, that's just so neat. Talking about the engine, you and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, it is, in, originally, was an air cooled engine. That is correct. But was converted. Yes. To so tell to us Marinius. about that. What they did. So there were a number of companies that converted airplane engines to marine use. Okay. Uh, one of them was the Capital Gear Company, which was right here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh. Okay. And uh, there were other Garwood, the boat builder, okay. uh, also converted aircraft engines, primarily Liberties, for marine use. But the engines were air cooled in the the aeronautic right application because you know lots yeah, of air, yeah. lots of air flowing past the engine. That doesn't work in marine engines. So the original construction of these engines was that there's an engine block to which the individual cylinders are bolted. So those cylinders would have been very lightweight and air-cooled in the aeronautic application. In the marine, they're cast, usually cast iron, uh, and with water jackets so that the engine can be water-cooled. Uh, so that was part of the conversion, as was uh, marine exhaust manifolds and marine transmissions. So that was kind of the package, and then those were marketed to boat builders around the country. Now, we'll, we'll uh, overlay a, <coughs> excuse me, a picture of this, but when you look at it, mm -hmm. The motor sitting in reverse from what it would be normally in a car. Mm -hmm. And then you've got this really long shaft that runs all the way, way down towards the front. Correct. And then it turns around and comes back the length of the boat. Right. I mean, because it, I mean, it has to be literally, I mean, this is a huge boat, but I'm sure it's within 10 feet of the front before it turns. Correct. Yes. So, so there, there are a couple reasons for that. One, one is that they were going uh, in a normal, not race configuration. You would need a geared transmission with forward neutral reverse right. to make the boat perform right. properly and to be able to pull it up to a dock and yep. so on. In a race application, you want it as light as it can be. So this has one gearbox, which is referred to as V-Drive, okay. because it allows the power to make the, to come straight out the back of the engine and make a V to get the angle of the shaft through the bottom of the boat. And this uh, <coughs> transmission only has an in and out of gear. So it's got forward and neutral, no reverse because that would have added gears and complexity and weight. Right. So basically this is driving the engine has been and when the boat goes it's driving in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which which yeah. is is addressed with the rotation of the propeller. So okay. the propellers can either be what we call right hand right or, or left clockwise hand. if right. you're looking at the back of the boat right. or left hand counterclockwise oh, if you're oh, looking oh. at the back of the boat. So that's easy. 
but the the uh, one of the big reasons for that is that because of the step hull configuration the boat rides very flat in the water and one of the considerations was to keep the oiling consistent and relatively oh, yeah. level and nor a normal application uh, straight what we call straight inboard where the engine is backed mm -hmm. up by the yep. transmission and the transmission is bolted to the shaft which goes through the bottom of the boat it's all at an angle so the v-drive situation allows the drive out the engine to be level with the rest of the engine okay. wow so uh, in looking in the interior where the driver sits, there's a couple of unique things that I know so I've just never seen before. First of all, there's a foot throttle. Foot throttle, yes. Okay. Uh, then on the far left, there's a handle to pull. What? That's obviously not a driving thing, but what? Well, that's oh, the, on the on, on the, the dashboard. Yeah. yeah, that's a bilge pump. Oh, that's, that's a the, manual. Oh, you pump. would manually pump. Mm -hmm. And normally, uh, at at this at this time. You would have a, a pilot, a driver, yeah. and a riding mechanic with oh, you so to try to address. We'll go down here and take a look at it. So you uh, actually have the mechanic ride you with you during the race. Yeah. So you would have two people in the cockpit usually. Wow. And then I also okay. So then you you, you do have some sort of this on the floor looks like a, what you think of as a shifter, but it's not. And it it is neutral, neutral, sort of, but it's neutral or forward. Neutral or forward. Right. Okay. And then um, you've got some really, it must be like heel rests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so exactly. you would be able to, they're little shoes and you just rest your heel in them. So that you yeah. could, I got, I got that backwards. But. So that you could brace yourself and the, the oh. cornering was pretty brutal. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I bet with a riding flat it was. And and if you see a modern uh, unlimited hydroplane today, you will note that the hull shape is very gradual, a very gradual translation of the flat to the sides of the boat. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a feature that is known in the industry as what's called no trip chains. These are not no trip chains. They are trip chains. So what what can happen here with this uh, very just it's a right angle. Yes, yeah. it's a it's a really sharp edge there in a race situation as you're trying to, to corner the the chain can catch and oh. flip the boat over. So if you can imagine yeah. uh, in a in a race where you're experiencing pretty serious G forces, you need some way to keep your feet in place, in place so oh. that you could use your legs to balance and, and wow. stay behind the wheel in essence. Um, you also note that there's a, a switch in the floor that looks like what we would think of as an old high beam switch. Yeah. That is the starter, the engine starter switch. So there's a, a, a switch, an on-off switch on the dash that yep. you switch on. So that's and not a magneto. It's just an on-off. They are magnetos, okay. but yes, in, in essence, it's on off. And then you would hit the the uh, button on the floor to start the engine. <laughs> that had to be quite a sound. Oh, it's it's. This is thunderous. It's got you be. can't miss it. It's unlike anything <laughs> that you and it's. Uh, because of the straight pipes and mm -hmm. the exhaust flowing out the pipes, it's loud. It's pretty throaty, huh? Dirty. Flame comes out of those nice. pipes under certain circumstances. Okay, I'm sold. we got to see this right. <laughs> <laughs> and the old photos of the race drivers after the race, they wore goggles. Oh, yeah. And they, in the, the photos after the race, they usually have the goggles off and they look kind of like a raccoon because it's clean where the goggles weren't and the rest of their face is covered in oil and ash. And so it, it, if you're enjoying looking at this this boat, folks, it is actually available to go look at. Um, and it's available, Dave, tell us where it's available if they want to go see it. Uh, this boat is on loan through
through 2020 to the Legacy of the Lakes Museum in Alexandria, Minnesota, and you can look online at legacyoflakes.org, um, and it will be there through the season. And that's also you. That's the same. That's your club that you belong to, right? Well, the the club is the Lando Lakes Classic Boat Club. There we go. Uh, we produce a couple of fabulous boat shows in the Minnesota area. Uh, one is the Gull Lake Classic at Bar Harbor Supper Club. That takes place on August 29th this year uh, in the Brainerd Lakes area. And then the other show is the Real Runabouts Rendezvous, which we hold at Lord Fletcher's on Lake Minnetonka this year, the 7th of September. I'm sorry, not the, the 7th of September is Labor Day. It's the 12th of September, the Saturday after Labor Day. All right, so if you enjoy these kind of boats, you can come see more boats like this, other class of boats at those locations sometimes. Dave, thank you so much. And we have two guys around thank for you. spending your time and your wisdom with us, telling us your stories about this boat. We absolutely love it. All right, great, thanks.